So you want to carry out a building project in Nigeria, but you do not live here. You live abroad. And the major problem is, I just do not want people to swindle me. I just do not want to pay more than I'm supposed to pay. How can I ensure that I do not pay more than I'm supposed to pay? How do I ensure that these people actually do what I want and then give me the results I want? And how do I ensure that I don't just end up getting scammed? Well, this is what I'm going to be talking about on this episode of the Ask a Realtor Show. Stay tuned. Alright, if you're watching me on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please tap on the subscribe button right now. And when you do that, do not forget to tap on the little bell close to it so that whenever we post new videos, you'll be the first to know. My name is Odisa Almera and this is the Ask a Realtor Show where I answer all your real estate questions. And I help you make safe and profitable real estate investments. Now let's let's go back to the topic for this episode. How can you ensure that your building project you can carry it out without getting swindled, without getting scammed, without spending more than you should spend, and without losing your money? Okay, first of all, let's assume that you've purchased the land already, you've secured the land. The next thing you want to do is start building. Well, when you want to build it's it's two ways it's either you get a contractor or you do it yourself now most people get a contractor or most people get their brother uh, or their sister to manage that project for them now first things first you do not want to spend more than you should obviously yes you know you are going to at some point spend more than you plan to but you see the best thing is to make sure that you control your expenses so the first thing you want to ask for is a budget yes let's say your brother your younger brother or your elder brother is your project manager you know you want to ask for a budget so your your brother is going to contract a builder or in most cases a big layer you know de depending on who is building for you and then get a, a budget now the truth is, I know we get sentimental when it comes to these things, you know, we just want to, oh, that's, that's my brother, he won't give me that, that's my brother, he won't take more than necessary. But you really want to know how much am I supposed to spend on this project? So you could ask your brother, yes, okay, raise me a budget, you know, raise me a quotation, a quotation and then he will raise one for you. But don't end it there. You can also go online and look for, you know, um, a different builder, a different um, contractor who will also raise you a budget. As a matter of fact, what I want to say at this point is get about three budgets from three different parties. The whole idea is so that you can compare these three budgets, then you know, you know, who you want to go with. Okay, let's say you want to actually be sentimental, you're emotional, you want to actually go with your brother, you want your brother to do this for you. Yes. You let him know that I have, I've got three budgets. The one you gave me and two other budgets. Now let's compare these three. This one is the cheapest. Why? You know, then you make an objective criticism of the three budgets. You understand? Then you finally pick the one you want to go with. What this does for you is it gives you an idea of how much your um, project should cost. In the end, you know, in the end, what would happen is okay maybe you exceed the budget a bit it will just be by a very little um, percentage a very little margin and let's say in most cases if the budget is very good you know you just might not um, um, need to you just might not spend up to what is in the budget now that's one another thing about getting the budget up front is that you want to compare the materials that each um, contractor is proposing because one thing um, that contractors do is that let's say you need um, 2,000 blocks for this project they just might tell you that man you need 4,500 blocks and the thing is when you end up paying for this 4,500 blocks what, what, what happens is they are here you are not here you are not on ground they just end up you know using the 2,000 blocks that that they know you need the remaining money for the 2,500 blocks, boom, it's gone, you know, it's gone. You, um, that money goes into their pockets. So first of all, get a trusted person who's going to manage the project. Get 
multiple budgets, about three budgets, you know, that's okay. So that you can compare and know, okay, this person is saying I will need 2,000 blocks. This one is saying I will need 4,500 blocks. Why is this person's own more than this person's own? Then you ask questions and then you can come up with with, 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 with a definite budget. That's one, set and um, get your budget right. The second thing you want to do is even when you have your budget, you know, you do not want to just send all the money home at once. Let's say it's 25 million naira that um, it will take you to, to do that project. Let's say the budget comes up to, to, to 25 million naira. What you should do is not just send the whole money once. First of all, you send the money in bits. So let's say today you send 2 million naira. Yes, that 2 million naira will do something for them. And what you want is after sending money home, let's say you send 2 million naira home, you want like a breakdown of how that money was spent. You want a breakdown of, of how that money was spent. So if you send 2 million naira home and they say we bought 1,000, uh, we, we bought, we bought 10,000 blocks, we bought um, 50 iron rod, we bought this, this, this. Let them break it down and say this is how we spent this two million naira. This is how we spent the two million naira. And then what will happen is that um, by the end of that two million naira, you send the next say two million naira or three million naira. They use it for what they can use it for. You see, what happens is that you, you keep sending this money in bits, and it controls fraud. It controls the way they would have spent your money if you had sent if, if you had sent everything at once. So you will notice that by the time you, you are done with the building, you probably never spend up to, up to 25 million naira. Or if they are actually genuine and you spend 25 million naira, you might just spend you know an extra you know amount. You, the, 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 the overflow won't be as much as they would have told you if you had sent 25 million naira once. So what it does is like I said, it controls fraud, it controls excess spending because what happens is at times people don't defraud you but when they see so much money you know they, they they don't know how to handle it and then someone says the block is 250 naira per, 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 per nine inches block and then they don't negotiate because they have that bulk money with them but when they say that the money is not much you know plus the what you put in their mind is that man i don't have so much money you know that pushes them to negotiate on your behalf that pushes them to be frugal instead of being um, extravagant with your money. Now, that's that's the second point. Now, another thing I want you to do is you should be able to negotiate. If you, if you're not negotiating on by yourself, then the person who is managing your project, say your consultant, your project manager, your brother, whoever is managing that project, should be able to negotiate very well on your behalf. Because what happens is people who supply these materials, what they do is, let's say, um. One one block, one ninety block costs could could go for one seventy one eighty. They might just tell you, man, this block is two fifty. And if you're not aware, you know, you, you, you just say, okay, fine, let's let's do it, or just say, okay, fine, let's do two twenty, and they agree. What I have noticed is that you should be able to negotiate properly, negotiate properly, and then when you negotiate properly, you will see that the cost of these things come down. So let's say you have 200 naira per block on your budget. You should you could negotiate 180 naira per block. That's another thing, you, you know. And then another point is to buy your materials in bulk. Buy your materials in bulk. You know, instead of saying uh, we just want you know one one truckload of sand, you could order you know multiple truckloads. Provided, provided that uh, you get um, a discount, provided that you get a discount. But uh, that's that's another point. Now, another one is you should be able to pay your consultant well. Now, your consultant could be your project manager. He could be your brother. No sentiment. If it's your brother, pay him well. If it's um, an external consultant, pay him well. If it's a project manager, pay him well. Because what I've noticed is that most people, you know, get caught up in the whole i'm um, building my house and then they get the budget they are paying for the whole building but the consultant who is doing the job they, they they don't pay them well they just try to you know negotiate ridiculous amounts the truth is that if you pay your consultant well and uh, let's say your consultant is a genuine person i hope this person is a genuine person by default what happens is that they won't even 
think about you know adding extra amounts to the um, cost of the materials, adding extra amounts to the cost they will pay the contractors. All they will just do is give you a clean job, and that fee that you're paying them is good for them. That fee that you're paying them is okay for them. So pay your consultants well because it will go a long way in delivering your project. Then I'm not, the, my my final point is try and put like a check mechanism, you know, to check your consultant and check your um, contractors. Yes, your consultants, if they are really genuine, they might have some some um, initial problems with it because who wants to stay and then think that oh this guy don't as they don't even trust me even when I'm doing all my my best for him. But the truth is, if they are really genuine, at some point they'll just see like okay. Yes, this guy could, may trust me, but he's just trying to be sure. So from time to time, just send someone to just go to the side and, and be sure that what they said they are doing is what they are doing. And then always ask for pictures, pictures and videos so that you see the level of the work at every time. So let's, let's, let's try and do a recap. I, I don't have to list it out here, but the first thing is try and get multiple budgets and the other thing I said was, um, okay, I will, I will arrange them, in, you know, in order. Try and get multiple budgets. Negotiate very well. Pay your consultants well. Get pictures and videos. I also said you should um, send your money in bits. Send your money in bits and then try and put a check mechanism, you know, to monitor your consultants, to monitor the contractors. All right, guys, this is what I have for you on this episode of the Ask a Realtor Show. I hope you've gotten enough value from this episode. If you have, please let me hear them in the comment section below. And then also do not forget to like this video if it pleases you. And then do not forget to share as well. All right, guys, we've come to the end of this episode. And my name remains Olusa Mira. I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.